Now, we talked about Nobel Prizes earlier and the satire involved in the uh, allocation of peace prizes, but no one makes any criticism about the other Nobel Prizes. And we're about to uh, meet uh, a man who won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. No mean achievement, especially as he's from Motherwell. And there are not many Nobel Prize winners have come from uh, the Steel City. Uh, Dr. David Macmillan, Professor David Macmillan, is now uh, at, uh, a professor at Princeton University and joins us uh, from the United States now. Professor Macmillan, it's uh, an honor uh, to meet you. I have not yet ever met a Nobel laureate. Tell us how it goes. How do you hear that you're in the running? And if you're in the running, are you allowed to do a bit of wheeling and dealing and spinning and sharp elbows, Alec Ferguson type uh, elbows? I mean, is there any of that or is it an entirely decorous affair? Uh, thanks, George. Um, thanks for uh, having me on this show. And you know, I would say that I, I wish I wish you could do wheeling and dealing because I think coming from Scotland, maybe I've been a wee bit better at it. But the, uh, <laughs> no, it's completely anonymous. You don't know what's going on. You don't know who's nominated. You don't do a thing about it until allegedly you get the phone call. Uh, I didn't get the phone call <laughs> because uh, they were trying to reach me, but they couldn't reach me. And then someone else got to me and I actually thought it was someone taking the mickey at me. So I ended up uh, just going back to sleep. And then I woke up a little bit later, went downstairs and looked at the front of the New York Times and my face was there. So then I I realized that this had actually happened. How simply marvelous. Uh, They must have been dancing in the streets of Motherwell uh, (laughs) to this news. Um, Now, how does it change your life? I mean, do you get better gigs? Do you get better wages? I mean... Do you get access to research funding and so on that you wouldn't get? Presumably you do. Um, I don't know. I mean, it only happened four days ago. Um, but the, uh, I mean, it certainly changed my life in ways that are bizarre and crazy. Uh, I was on, you know, yesterday morning, I was on my favourite radio show in the world, which is Off the Ball, the BBC Scotland Football. Uh, I've been on it show. many times. A wonderful show. I love that show. The Tam and Stuart are just the best. Yeah. Uh, so that, but just the other thing, I mean, like, you know, I was walking down the street and I was, I was in New York and I, I, some people stopped me and sort of hugged me. I walked into a, a local restaurant and the waitress came up and gave me a big hug. It's just, it's bizarre. It's just completely going from uh, nowhere to sort of being known overnight is it's a pretty uh, unique experience. And I think one that's obviously going to evolve over time, but at the moment I'm still sort of getting used to the whole concept of it. Well, you need an agent to, uh, to get out and uh, demand the bigger wages and so on. How did this all happen, David? There you are, a schoolboy in Scotland, in Motherwell, come from Motherwell. Uh, where does the interest in science come from? Well, for me, it was pretty interesting. I mean, my, my dad, as you mentioned, my dad was a steel worker. My mum was a home help. Um, basically, my brother, it was my older brother, decided he wanted to go to uni. And uh, no one I knew had ever went to uni. And then he went, my mom and dad were actually pretty much against it. And, uh, but he went, and so he was a real sort of first one over the trenches. And uh, as soon as the day he he graduated, he got a job where he was getting paid more money than my dad as a steel worker. And I think from that moment on, my mom and dad told me, all right, you have to go to uni. <laughs> so that was, that, was the, that was the deal. So if it wasn't for my brother, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. I, I mean, I, I never knew a Nobel laureate, but I never knew actually a, a chemist either. I mean, did you get ribbed at school as a geek? No, I mean, I, I wasn't. I mean, it was one of those things. I think my, all my pals at school were surprised when I went to uni as well. <laughs> um, so I was. I mean, I, I wasn't really that massively into science or someone who was doing chemistry experiments in their bathtub at home. I wasn't. I wasn't that person. I mean, I always liked, you know thinking about you know science and the logic of it and all of that when I was at school I always thought that was really interesting um but I was never that person um and really you know when you went to uni well the great thing about when you go to uni is all the people who are there are sort of any of the same stuff you're in so it worked out just fine and but no I don't think anyone from my 
to Belsall Academy. <laughs> would remember me as somebody who was out there doing the mad scientist stuff. Oh, you were at Bells Hill? Oh, my goodness, that is remarkable. Uh, now, look, treat us as Egypt's here. Uh, try and explain to an audience of a million uh, lay people, uh, what was it about your work that first attracted uh, the notice of the Nobel Prize Committee? Well, what it was, was that, um, you know, if you look around you right now, where you're sitting, uh, everything around you is made by chemical reactions. Every single thing that you can see in front of you was made by a chemical reaction. And there's a thing called catalysis. And catalysis, or a catalyst, is a word that we more commonly use, is a way that you can not just accelerate how those reactions can be faster, you can invent completely new reactions, chemical reactions, as a result of which you can use them for making new medicines, new materials, lots of things you can use it for. And what we did, um, so catalysts were, have been known for a very long time, but the vast majority of them are, are metals. You know, the thing in your car is a metal. They're, and metals are sort of bad for the environment, often, they're toxic, often. So what we decided to do was to say, is it possible you could actually use organic molecules? And if you're wondering what an organic molecule is, if you look at your hands right now, you, you are organic, you're made of organic molecules. So you know that those are not really toxic because we, we walk around, we live in this environment. It's completely fine. We're actually pretty, you know, I wouldn't say that human race is benign to the environment, but humans on their own are benign. And so those organic molecules in and of themselves, we thought, could, would it be possible we could come up with a field of catalysis and would use those instead of using metals? And it was one of those sort of, sort of wacky ideas that should have never worked, but it did work. And so then that's, where, that's how the whole thing got going. Unbelievable. And you did this uh, in conjunction with a German scientist, is that right? Not quite. I mean, we both did it completely independently from each other. Um, oh. And so basically what happened is uh, we both submitted our studies for publication basically about exactly the same time, uh, remarkably, actually. And so it was just by, and I think that in and of itself helped the field take off as well, because it was, was kind of noticeable that two different people kind of had the same idea at the same moment. Uh, what applications would there be for your discovery? Well, uh, the first, first ones that, you know, a lot of chemists care about, as you may expect, is pharmaceuticals. And so it's used extensively for pharmaceutical, both discovery, but then you've got one of the trickiest things about pharmaceuticals, you have to make enough of it to give to society. And there's a lot of people, and that's a lot of, that's a lot of medicine you need. So it's used in that context. The other way is in a lot, also nowadays, is materials. Uh, there's so many materials that are found worldwide now that you can, you can make them using this type of catalysis as well. What's the dough? Uh, I mean, you get a hat and a scroll and all that, but is there money in it? There is. I was told this yesterday, and I don't know, I haven't actually sat down and even thought about it. Everyone's been so kind of wild. I think I was told, I was told in Kroner, which I didn't understand, but then <laughs> uh, uh, Tam... And Stuart told me yesterday it was £800,000, which uh, I think is about the right, I think that's the ballpark. I haven't been told exactly what it is, so I really don't know the, but I know it's a, it's a decent sized number. You'll need to throw a party, if not in Princeton, <laughs> then in Motherwell. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, we haven't decided what we're going to do, but a lot of it will be reinvesting back into like Belsall Academy and, and New Stevenson Primary and St. Pat's and New Stevenson as well. So those are probably the first place we'll start and thinking about how, what we're going to do with it. What team do you support, David? Uh, I'm a big Rangers fan, George. Somebody told me that earlier. They said you were a te teddy bear. <clears throat> a teddy bear, yeah. Which, that's, yeah. You have to uh, be from where we're from to know what that means. Well, <laughs> I take my hat off for the first time to a Rangers fan, uh, <laughs> Professor David <laughs> McMillan, Nobel laureate from Motherwell. Who'd have thunk it? Thanks for joining us.